When I'm writing code, especially reusable code, I like to think of things in terms of a spectrum of stable and volatile. This is one way that I look at my code. So right on the left side of this left side of the spectrum here, you might have something like HTML's native input. That is not going to change very much. It's almost always going to be the exact same uh, and it's going to work beautifully across all browsers. That's like all the way on the left side of the spectrum. But then on the right side of the spectrum is code on the front end, for example, that is constantly changing. You know, your, your boss will come along and ask you to change this tiny thing and then that kind of like breaks your tests and so you have to like rewrite them again. This is often why people don't like testing the front end because tiny things like they change all the time and it makes it very difficult to test. Um, yeah, so there's kind of like these two ends of the spectrum here. Let me give you some examples now. So you've got your sort of input component all the way on the left side. And you've, you've also got Quasar's, uh, Quasar's library. I consider this to be very far on the stable side of the spectrum. I can trust that Quasar's components are not going to change very much. In fact, usually if there's a breaking, almost always when there's a breaking change, you're going to know and it's going to be tagged as a new version. So this is very much on the stable side of the, pro, of the um, spectrum. It's very well tested. People have used and used and used these components and I can trust them. And then on the volatile end of the spec, oh, and with the example here is the Q input component, all right? So I would, I would say that the input component native to HTML is as far on the left as you can get, but then you've got the Q input component which is basically a wrap around, around the input component, which makes it um, a bit fancier, but it's slightly less stable because, you know, Quasar might want to change bits and pieces around that. So anyway, then you've got the volatile end of the spectrum. All right. And these are kind of your final component abstractions. So if you think about like your view templates, this is the last thing at the very top that is actually going to be used on the front end. Usually for most people, they will start out with just these two things here. They'll have Quasar on the left side, and then on the right, on the right side, they'll have like, in my example here, update employee salary input, which is just like, it could be an input, and you put some data in there that, you know, the user puts something into that input, and that automatically will then update the employee's salary, all right? So it might be, for example, $500, and it automatically updates that on the back end. When you're starting out, you will probably build this from scratch. However, as you start building components like this over and over again, and this is something that I ran into, right, um, where I wanted to input numbers in an, in an input field with commas and those decimal and decimal places and all of that, it eventually reached a point where I wanted to create a new component for it because I was writing the same code over and over again. And this is where we get to the sort of pretty stable side of the spectrum. Um, so I'll explain here. These are, this is where you'll often see people using base components. And I created a B number input component, and that's for stuff like this. Let's just say you've got a number like that, 0.67. As the user is typing in that number, if you wanna add the commas in and the decimal places and making sure when there's just a decimal on its own, you know, it formats correctly and the data looks right on the inside, like that is a nightmare to build. And if I had to build that or copy paste that code every single time I wanted to use that functionality, it would be a nightmare. So I created this B number input component. All right. So that's, that's kind of like the basic concept here. As you start to build stuff on the volatile end of the spectrum, some common patterns will start to emerge. And so you might want to create like a component library um, or some base components that you can then extend so that you can use that functionality. And then you know, like, you wanna make sure that this side of the spectrum is really, really well tested. You wanna make sure that your base components are well tested and that they're working great. Because if you change something in here and you're using it all over the place in your app, then you could break a whole lot of things, okay? So you wanna make sure that this is pretty well tested and quite stable. It's actually less important that this side of the spectrum is well tested, in my opinion. Um, in fact, sometimes for these, in comp these components, I don't do any testing because they're ex basically very basically extending these components. Um, and so it doesn't need to be um, tested very much. All right, so moving on then, in this example, I found that I was creating fields that update stuff a lot. So often I would have a B number input, and then when I input something, it updates a model. 
Okay, so this was happening a lot in my code. So I figured, hey, let's create a component for that as well. And in fact, I can get rid of this now. And so I created the idea of model components. And in this, and that's kind of in the kind of stable end of the spectrum. You'll notice we're getting further and further to the right here. So once again, I do still want this to be tested, but it's less important as getting this well tested. And it's less important as making sure you're using a framework like Quasar that's very well tested. And the example here is the M update number input component. One sec, I've got a message from my girlfriend. All right, it's about 15 minutes away. I've got to wrap this up soon. <laughs> All right, so the M update number input. Um, and the, the idea of this is that I can add, I can feed a model into it for in this case, a user. And then I can also f feed in a field like a salary. So just say, for example, we've got another component here. Um, this one updates the employee's salary. We could have another one that updates the employee's, um, I don't know, age. That's probably not a great example because it's not a number you'd use commas for. But anyway, you, you get the idea. And then in that case, it could also extend the model component, all right? And so you, you then don't have to repeat the updating co code over and over and over again, all right? So this is the idea of creating code um, on the spectrum. The reason I wanted to explain this is because um, often people want to know, like, what do I test and um, how do I test things and all that kind of stuff. My advice would be the further left on the spectrum, the more important that it is that it's tested. Okay, luckily Quasar's tested for us. We don't have to worry about it. Um, base components, you want to be well tested. And the kind of stable components, you want to be a little, you know, pretty well tested as well. Volatile, it's less important. Okay. And the reason you want this to be well tested, and I think I might have mentioned this already, is because if you're changing stuff in here, you want to make sure that it's not going to mess up all of those components that are extending it. All right. Okay. So what I'll usually do is turn these into two libraries. I've got my Quasar UI base components. This is just an extension that I created. And then I've got another library here for my Quasar UI model components. And the reason I do it this way is because in our company, we will usually have, uh, we plan on having many apps. In fact, we've already got like five or six Quasar apps. And I wanna be able to use my base components and my model components across those apps. Okay, I'll give you an example. So now all of these apps, like we have a Rainfall Collection app, an app for the admins, an app for contacts, so the admins can see all of their contacts, an app for the clients, all that kind of stuff. Now, they can all extend from the UI base components library and the UI model library, okay? And this, a lot of the code now here is only the more volatile code, but it's extending and it becomes very, um, it, it becomes very terse code. There's not very much code I'm writing here is because it's extending these patterns that I've used over and over and over again. All right. But one thing I just want to add here before you, you know, look at this idea and think, oh, great, I'm going to start, um, you know, extending everything and creating these component libraries. When you're first starting out, in fact, in my opinion, for the first like six months, even to a year for, um, at least for our organization, it totally depends on the organization. You don't want to have you don't want to be doing this part yet, okay? You don't want to have this sort of middle ground yet. I would spend, um, I would repeat my code to begin with um, over and over again, you know, five, maybe even 10 times until it becomes very obvious what the API for these base components will look like in your code, okay? Because you want to make sure that you're getting these components right from the beginning, because if you get them wrong, it's very difficult to update them because then you need to update all of the components of this side of the spectrum that are then relying on that component, okay? And so what I would do early on is wait until these are real pain points and you have a really clear idea of what you would want those base components to look like. And then you can start building your own Quasar UI um, sort of base components library. And then once... Um, and this exact same with these kind of Quasar UI model components library. Wait until you have a very clear idea of how you're going to do API requests, what that component would look like before you go ahead and build it. Otherwise, you have to update code all over the place. So hopefully I didn't ramble too much and you found this video useful. I certainly enjoyed making it for you. I love talking about this stuff. And if you found it useful and you like this kind of thing where I'm sort of speaking more off, off the cuff, just stuff I've been learning in day-to-day -day life as, um, um, as a coder building production applications, 
then let me know in the comments and I'll do a few more of them. All right, see you guys in the next video.